It is a record start to the month of November, but I do have some chillier changes that I'm tracking just ahead. Lexington police are investigating a fatal crash between a pickup and a tractor. Franklin County deputies say a suspect in one of their robberies was arrested after a standoff here in Lexington. More on the woman accused ahead at four. This is WKYT News at four. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpott reporting. We are beginning the month with a tie for record highs across much of the bluegrass state, but these temperatures won't be sticking around for long. We want to check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. What a way to start November. Yeah, off and running on the warmest start since back in 1987, which, by the way, is the record high for the entire month on this date. Said back in 1987 83, we tied that an hour ago in Lexington. Since then, we tweet about the thermometer, it drops. 81, current temperature there. 81 into Mount Sterling and Moorhead, Maysville. 81, Danville. Low 80s across southern Kentucky. We're warmer out to our west. And what we're looking at, if you're out and about this evening, 70s, even just after sundown, and only mid 60s by the time 11 o'clock rolls around. Wow. Yeah, it's November, at least according to the calendar. We look outside at your Defender Radar Network. Fair amount of clouds across central and eastern Kentucky. Those are high clouds and not producing precipitation, though. A little rain has popped up just to our east. What we're going to focus on, though, is a front that's off to our west. It's got warm air out ahead of it for one more day, but that cold front that is out just east of the Rockies will arrive into town as we go into the day on Thursday, and that's going to bring some big time changes. To the weather across the bluegrass state. And Amber, when I get back in 15 minutes, we'll have an hour by hour forecast that shows you just another warm day and then a big time drop as we go toward the end of the week. It may actually feel chilly for a change. We'll break it down in a few. Well, how about that, Chris? Thank you. A busy Lexington Road remains closed this afternoon because of a deadly crash. It happened shortly before noon on Old Richmond Road or US 25. Officials tell us a pickup truck clipped a tractor while trying to pass traffic near Evans Mill Road. We're told one person died at the scene, another was taken to the hospital. WKYT's Victor Puente is at the scene. He has the latest details. It's our top story at four. Police expect this road to be closed for several more hours as they continue the reconstruction into this fatal crash. Lexington police say they were called at 1142 to Old Richmond Road near Evans Mill Road. When they got here, they found a truck that had hit a tractor and rolled over and crashed into a fence. There were two people inside the truck. One was pronounced dead at the scene. The other was taken to the hospital. The driver of the tractor was also taken to the hospital, but police say they expect him to be okay. They think the driver of the pickup was trying to pass the tractor when he clipped it and lost control, shooting off the road. They say they do have witnesses, including the driver of the truck that was behind the tractor. We know that there was one truck that was following behind the tractor with his, I think he probably had his hazard lights on. He was uh, following the tractors to keep the faster traffic off of him, but I believe that's the only traffic that was behind the tractor when this happened. Sergeant Combs said he isn't sure yet where the people in that pickup are from. He said they wouldn't be releasing any information about them until they concluded their investigation out here on the road. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Police say the area where that crash happened is a no passing zone. Traffic is being rerouted at Jack's Creek and Evans Mill. Police are investigating after a car crashed into a store in Danville. Someone hit the Verizon store on Houstonville Road. That car went into the building. Danville police say a woman was pulling into a parking spot in front of the store when she lost control of her Dodge Ram pickup. That pickup went through the front of the business before striking a wall, leading to the adjoining business, personal finance. Emergency crews on the scene told WKYT's Phil Pendleton there were no injuries as a result of this accident. We'll have a report from Danville on WKYT News at 5. We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Sam? Good afternoon, Amber. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says a woman involved in a standoff in Lexington is a suspect in a recent robbery they worked. Lexington police charged Robin Holbert after they were involved in a standoff with her on October 25th. They say she pulled a gun during a traffic stop on Versailles Road. After several hours, Holbert surrendered and the standoff ended peacefully. Today, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office announced that she is a suspect in a robbery they investigated at a gas station on Evergreen Road back on October 23rd.
You know, it was a challenge, uh, obviously, the skies. Um, but, you know, we had several tips come in that, that identified her on our Facebook page and on our text tip line. Communicating with Lexington PD, um, you know, everything come out that they had in their evidence on her at the time was the items that we were looking for. You know, when, when agencies work together, good things happen. The Franklin County Sheriff's Department says Holbert covered her body in white powder or paint. We'll have more on this story ahead on WKYT News at 530. A man accused of killing three people in a Danville pawn shop was back in court today. Attorneys for Kenneth Keith are asking for a hearing to prevent some of the evidence in the case from being allowed in court. Keith allegedly murdered Michael and Angela Hawkinsmith and Daniel Smith in September of 2013. Prosecutors say they're ready for the trial. From a standpoint of forensic evidence, case preparation, uh, we're ready for the case to be set for trial. And we'll have more on when the prosecution believes the case could go to trial ahead on WKYT News at 6. That's a look at some of the news in progress on this Tuesday. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. With just one week to go before the election, the race for president is looking like it could come down to the wire. As polls tighten, the candidates are hitting each other where it hurts. Clinton's emails and Trump's treatment of women. Scott McLean has the latest on the state of the race in this report from Washington. One week ago, Hillary Clinton looked like she was running away with the election. Now, new national polling shows that outcome no longer seems as certain. Change is coming. The choice is yours. I do believe we are stronger together. The guiding rule of the political class in Washington, D.C., is that they are looking out only for themselves. Donald Trump is campaigning in Democratic leaning Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, buoyed by news that the FBI at the 11th hour. Will examine another batch of emails potentially related to Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server as Secretary of State. We just want fairness. The Clinton campaign is now complaining of a double standard at the Bureau. Gary Johnson, the Libertarian candidate, is piling on to the controversy, saying Clinton risks impeachment if elected. Unquestionably, this is going to be the nation's agenda for the entire time she is in office, and it may well end up in impeachment. The CNN poll of polls shows Clinton with a four-point lead. But the latest ABC News Washington Post tracking poll shows Trump leading for the first time since May. In response, Clinton is hitting Trump where it hurts. When I come home and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. The Clinton campaign is rolling out this new ad, while Clinton herself is campaigning with Alicia Machado, a former Miss Universe Trump reportedly called Miss Piggy, trying to change the subject from her emails to Trump's treatment of women. In Washington, I'm Scott McLean. Six people are dead after a school bus and commuter bus crashed this morning in southwest Baltimore. This helicopter footage shows the head-on collision. Police say it happened just before the morning rush hour in the western area of the city. No children were on the school bus when it crashed. Police say the school bus slammed into a car, then continued to where it hit a pillar before heading into oncoming traffic where it hit the commuter bus. There's no word on what caused that school bus driver to crash. Police say 10 people were injured. At least one person is dead and several others injured in eastern Alabama where crews continue to battle a gas fire that has sparked wildfires and evacuations. The fire started after a colonial gas pipeline exploded. This blast site is not far from where a line ruptured in September leading to fuel shortages and gas price spikes in several southern states. Having the second line shut down could have a ripple effect more into the northeast. And the World Series could end tonight. The Chicago Cubs head to Cleveland to take on the Indians in Game 6. The Cubs beat the Indians 3-2 to two in Game 5 Sunday at Wrigley Field, but Cleveland leads the series 3-2 to two and is one victory away from winning its first series since 1948. A new study finds racial discrimination by Uber and Lyft. The details in WKYT Money Watch. And Amazon is getting in on Black Friday deals early when you can start saving coming up. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family.
Welcome back in. If you are African American or a woman, Uber is more likely to overcharge or cancel your ride. That begins today's Money Watch. That is according to a new study that looked at roughly 1,500 rides in Seattle and Boston. People with African American sounding names have longer wait times and are more likely to have their ride canceled. And female passengers often have to pay more because they get stuck with chatty drivers who drag out the trip. The study found similar results with Lyft. Toyota is launching some new technology to simplify car sharing. A pilot program will launch in January in San Francisco using a system that lets users unlock the doors and start the ignition using their smartphone. Toyota also plans to create a lease that will allow the person leasing to rent out their car and use the income to pay off that lease. The Federal Reserve starts its two-day policy meeting today. Tomorrow, we'll find out if the Fed will raise interest rates. Most analysts expect the Fed to wait until after the election next week and raise rates at its meeting in December. Halloween is only hours behind us, but for Amazon, today marks the start of the holiday season. Amazon.com is launching its Black Friday deals store today with new deals as often as every five minutes. That's now through December 22nd. Bad news for Britain. Their new British pound coin is causing some headaches. The coin won't fit most existing vending machines, lockers, and shopping carts. That's because of its shape. It has 12 sides. The vending machines will have to be updated, and that will not come cheap. The Automatic Vending Association estimates it will cost the industry millions to make sure the 500,000 vending machines across the UK will accept the new coin. He's nominated for New Artist of the Year for the 50th anniversary of the CMA Awards. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. We're catching up with Cole Swindell when we return here on WKYT. And we're dealing with a record setting start to the month of November, but we're tracking a big cold front into town on Thursday. We'll break down what that means for the forecast in a moment. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, if you've been watching for the past week and change, we talked about how November was going to start off on an absolutely toasty start. Had 80s in the forecast a week ago. Here we are, November 1, and low 80s showing up into much of central and eastern Kentucky. High pressure across the eastern part of the country. Southwesterly winds ushering in record setting and near record setting highs all the way from the deep south into the Ohio Valley. Those we look down the road, you got a couple of cold fronts on the way later this week, Thursday into Friday, first front, and then the second front has a seasonal brand of chill that will blow on into town. It's going to knock those temperatures compared to where we are now way way down. So if you're a fan of this summertime air, Soak it up. It's got one more day. Then uh, we'll start to see the temperatures tailing off a little bit. Low 80s. Right now, most of central and eastern Kentucky. Lexington, November to remember. Day one says, yep, 83. Officially out of Bluegrass Airport. That ties the record high not only for the date, but also that's the warmest temperature November has ever produced around here. That's from 1987 and today. Tomorrow, record high is 82 degrees, which was also set in 1987. So you get the idea. The first few days of November off and running, very similar to what happened back in 1987. If you're playing along at home, when's the latest we've ever hit 80 in Lexington? November 17th, 1958. It's been a long time. We go to your Defender Radar Network. Clouds that are out there now, the beginning of some changes that will blow in. Now, tomorrow's forecast, it's upper 70s to low 80s, similar to what we're having out there today, though a few of us may whittle a degree or two off that afternoon high temperature. Winds will gust up, clouds will begin to thicken up near record highs with those gusty winds. Now, Thursday's a day we get the cold front into town. So as we plan ahead for Thursday, Friday into the coming weekend, we're going to get things back to where they should be for this time of year. Friday's a chilly day, especially compared to where we are right now. And instead of the 80s, we're talking about highs in the 50s. Hour by hour forecast, we'll walk you through those changes. This evening, it's warm. We go through tomorrow, another absolutely fantastic weather day. Upper 70s to low 80s, some high clouds showing up on that northwestern horizon. Showers, thunderstorms will begin to increase on Thursday. And as we go throughout the day, the numbers will drop. So when you go to work or school on Thursday, it's likely to be warmer than what it is when you come back home later that afternoon with some upper 50s to around 60. And again, that's about where we should be in a lot of cases for this time of year. End of the day on Friday, some upper 30s to low 40s, touch of fog, 
50s showing up into your Friday afternoon, and a chill is in the air, high school football fans. And look at Saturday morning, maybe a little frost out there with some mid to upper 30. Seven day forecast. As we go into the weekend, looking really, really good. 60 to 65 by day with overnight lows into the mid and upper 30s. And yep, we gain an hour of sleep Saturday night as we fall back. And those temperatures early next week, still seasonal for this time of year. Right now, let's check on live drive traffic. Here's Officer Don. Well, Dan, problems on South Broadway, also North Broadway, out to Third Street, and the Circle normal traffic flow. Drive times for the moment to Nicholas still, still less than 15. Only 11 or 12 minutes to Versailles so far past the airport. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. This is a big week for country music. It is CMA Awards Week in Music City. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about with Cole Swindell. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here in Nashville for the CMA Awards, catching up with CMA nominated Cole Swindell. This is a fun week for us, isn't it? Hey, I know. Every time I, I see y'all, I feel like we're getting to talk about new things, new songs, doing well, and now a nomination, CMA week. It's it's always fun to see y'all. Y'all y'all bring the energy, so it's it's always good to see. You. Well, I, let's talk about energy. You had plenty of it when you played Red, White, and Boom in Lexington. This uh, well, this was Labor Day, yeah. so not too long ago. Talk about playing. That because you played it a few years back, things have changed for you. Oh, absolutely, and and getting to play events like that, especially that that I can actually see the crowd, see how things have grown. It's just those moments don't come every night, and it's it's cool to see that we've built something in y'all's area. Y'all play my music, and the fans, y'all have amazing fans, listeners. I mean, they they're what makes it fun. I mean, if they're out there just sitting and watching, then it's hard for me to be having fun, you know. But a crowd like like that at Red, White, and Bloom is that's what you hope for when you wake up in the morning as an artist. I loved watching you um, when we were there at Whitaker Bank Ballpark because the crowd, they're singing your song. I mean, you just kind of. You put the mic out there and let them sing now. I mean, that's as an artist, as a songwriter, that's what you dream of. In college, I remember I used to do that, but those were songs I was covering. I didn't even write those, so that's what made me move to Nashville. I was like, I got to be writing the songs they're singing back to me, and I've, uh, I've, I'm getting to live that dream right now, thanks to a lot of, a lot of people's support. Well, thanks to you, dear. Thanks for stopping by, and good luck at thank the you, CMAs, you. Cole Swindell. Deanne, thanks. Riding your bike to work can be good for you in the long run. What one study finds coming up in Better Living. And could spending time on Facebook actually be good for your health? We'll have that story coming up. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $40 million, and tomorrow night's Powerball jackpot is $198 million. It is time now for Better Living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A new study suggests that biking could help your heart. The two new studies in Scandinavia suggest people who bike regularly to work or just for fun are less likely to develop cardiovascular trouble. Doctors found biking even just a half an hour each week can provide protection. Researchers in Canada studying heart health say efforts to lower bad cholesterol may be more effective than raising good cholesterol when it comes to fighting heart disease risk. And they confirm healthy lifestyle changes, including diet and exercise, are still best for treatment and prevention. How about this? A new study at the University of California, San Diego, found moderate use of social media like Facebook is associated with living longer. They stress the activity should maintain and enhance interactions offline. And Butterball is offering a new way to get you help with that Thanksgiving turkey. Since 1981, they've staffed a telephone helpline now to help struggling cooks. Well, now you can text your questions for turkey cooking guidance in the weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says more than 130 billion pounds of food is tossed out each year. In Britain, it's about 34 billion. The numbers are so staggering, some activists in the U.K. are putting food destined for the dumpster onto supermarket shelves. They tell Terry Okita food waste is an environmental crisis. This is the third time in two weeks that Sarah Glover has shopped at what's being called the anti-supermarket. Anti because many of these items have expired sell-by or best-by dates. We're all really d disgusted with the way the world is going and that we're exploiting it as much as we are and not appreciating what the earth gives us. 
Each week, as much as 20,000 pounds of groceries arrive at this warehouse in England. The Real Junk Food Project showcases just how much edible food is being discarded from supermarkets, restaurants, hotels, and cafes, places that donate these items to the store. Do you think a concept like this would work in the United States? Yeah, I think this concept could work anywhere, um, wherever food is wasted. Keith Annell helps run the market and notes Britain is the biggest food waste offender in the European Union. What we want to do is get the food out of those bins and just offer it to people. They test for safety by smelling, sampling and visually inspecting the food. If it's bad, they throw it away. I just put my money in the thing. Since all the items are donated, customers pay whatever they want. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant to think that all of this stuff has been saved from going into landfill. The Real Junk Food Project hopes this is the start of a global movement, getting consumers to think twice before tossing. Terry Okita, CBS News, West Yorkshire, England. Well, the Real Junk Food Project also donates groceries to schools and runs more than 125 food waste cafes around the world. Project managers say they've had calls from people living in New York and Indiana about opening cafes here in the U.S. Let's head over to Chris now for another check of the weather. What a way to start off the month of November yeah, today. Pretty, pretty incredible, isn't it? Warmest start to November since back in 1987. And Lexington tying the all-time record high for the month at 80. Three degrees for the first day of November. It's really weird to be driving around today listening to Christmas music uh, and looking at the thermometer on the car gauge and it's showing low 80s all across central and eastern Kentucky. Look at that almost summertime sky that we are seeing with a mix of sun and some clouds. And again, low 80s showing up into just about each and every stop across the entire bluegrass state this afternoon. We get one more day of the 80s, then we'll track some changes into town. Dare I say it becomes more like November by the end of the week? Seven-day forecast comes your way straight ahead. WKYT News at 430, and it starts right now.